What is going on guys? Today this video is going to be about doing my modifications. So what have I done to this Audi A3 since I first bought it? Now what I've done is I've gone, gone ahead and written down all the things that I've already done to this car so I can explain them all to you guys and while I'm talking about the items I'm still going to get a couple of little clips so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. So I hope you guys stick around and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so what I've gone and done is I've put a whole list of every single thing that I've done to this car since I bought it. So, first things first, I'm going to do it in different categories. So, I'm going to do the exterior, interior, lighting, I'm going to do it all in different categories. Put, the first thing I'll put up is black rings on the rear. So, on the boots, the Audi rings that are on the boots are black, which comes standard as chrome. But originally what it was is when I first got the car, I thought I'd just look for some cheap modifications. So I got a set from the front and back for both black rings, but I stuck with the black ones for about two months on the front. And then I went back to the chrome ones on the front because I didn't really fancy them. But with the rear, it really looks good and I'm really happy with them so far. So I think I'll be definitely sticking with the black rings on the back. Next one for the rear sort of the car is a painted rear diffuser. So originally these cars come with the diffuser being bat painted or coming as silver um, which is sort of like a dark silver but it didn't really take my fancy so what I did do is I painted it gloss black um, but I don't know if you might be able to see as in there's a couple of marks where the paint has actually come off the diffuser now so I might do a video in the future where I just take that diffuser off and respray it gloss black uh, just to fix up all the little bits that the paint has actually come off of. So, uh, yeah, that's that one. The painted center splitter on the front. So, again, it's the same thing, same color. It's basically a dark silver that comes in these cars originally. And I took it off, sprayed it gloss back, and I think it looks 10 times better being black than it is just dark silver. The next thing is my wheels. Now, these wheels are Bowler B1s. Uh, they're not rotor or anything like that, these are the actual real bowler ones um, which I got off Demon Tweaks. Now I think these set me back about 500 to 600 pounds but when I got them I thought you know what these, these are the wheels that I want. I went through so many different wheels looking, looking around and these are really the ones that caught my eye really. But I've had them now for about 18 months um, and yeah I'm pretty, pretty happy with them. The only bad thing or bad point about them is because they're so out facing and like the lip is so far out of the wheel it's uh, as soon as you get to a curb there's no bead protection from the tire it's just straight you're gonna hit your wheel if you hit the curb so uh, yeah I have caught it a couple of times here and there but not nothing too bad um, so yeah there's my wheels next thing is my honeycomb grill so this is the center grill on the front of the car now it's sort of an RS3 looking grill which basically comes in a honeycomb sort of style um, now I've had that for probably about a year and a half and um, it's one of the first modifications I've done to this car um, but uh, yeah I'm pretty happy with it I mean it fitted straight on there uh, it came from eBay as well probably about 150 quid so it didn't really set me back too much and it, for what it does it does look really good now so yeah I'm pretty happy with it the carbon fiber mirror cover so these set me back about 180 pounds so I also replaced the mirror indicators as well as over time they start to fade and I didn't actually realize how much they did actually fade when I replaced them with the new ones now these ones are so much more brighter now and I'm so happy with them because there is a big difference between how much these lights fade over years so um, yeah pretty happy with them the windows are tinted limo black now these were done before I had the car so the original owner already done these um, but it looks like he's got them done properly, I mean, it, there's no uh, bubbles or creases or anything, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with them anyway. So the next thing is the sticker front number plate. Now, with the honeycomb grill, you do have a little holder that comes with it, 
but I didn't really like the fact that I was covering over the, covering over the grill that I paid so much money for. So what I did is I just got a little sticker and it's basically just my number plate and put it on the side. Uh, but ever since I've had it on there for almost, well, like I said, 11 months or 12, 12 months or something like that. Um, and I've not had any problems with police or anything. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with them, how it's turned out. So the next thing will be the reverse camera. Uh, obviously this is a bit of the exterior um, on the boot. So yeah, it's basically just where your normal plate lights normally are. It's just the reverse camera. And then next to the reverse camera will be just a little interior uh, number plate light, which sort of just keep the left hand side of the number plate lit up at night. So uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. Dark uh, rear lights. So the original rear lights were they were leaking water, so like when it rained or whatever, you might get a little bit of condensation inside, and eventually there was actually like a bit of water at the bottom of the uh, light, which I did not like at all. So what it did is I just went, well, you know what, I'm not going to bother resealing these and everything because they're already scratched up as well. So I thought, you know what, I'll just buy some new ones. So on eBay, I think they were about 140 quid, um, and they basically. The standard style light, but just tinted around the edges. Um, it might come standard for the S3s, so that's probably where they've uh, got that from. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. I mean, they, they don't leak anymore. It's a really tight seal as well, so um, yeah, I think they're cool. So this doesn't really come in at, on the uh, exterior category, but it's just on there because it's just a little add-on. Um, basically, when you open the boot, you can either open it with a key or open it with just pulling the handle and because my uh, boot struts have little blue springs on them um, I might have got a little video of it um, or not I'm not too sure but basically when you open the boot it just opens itself for you uh, I might have got a video for that so you guys can see um, but yeah they were off eBay for about 30 quid for just two struts um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, so yeah, they're pretty cool. So next thing will be the interior. So first things first that's on my list is my dash camera. Now I got these because I thought if anyone's gonna, if I or someone jumps out in front of me, uh, as well as when I park in my car, this thing turns straight on as soon as it sees some action. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I did have one originally, which was a bit cheaper but I've just found that the quality wasn't as best as it could be. Um, so what I did is got this one off of Amazon for about £50 and ever since it's been spot on so yeah I'm pretty really pleased with it. So next one is just a Gecko air freshener. So this is basically they sold in the Audi dealerships. Um, it's basically just a little air freshener that has the Audi tag on. Um, I know it's basically a Gecko because Audi like to think that the logo of the quattro sort of a gecko sort of thing because it's four four legs um, but uh, yeah it's a nice little air freshener I mean I mostly just bought it just because it's got the Audi logo on it <laughs> but um, yeah so next one will be my iPhone mount so basically this comes in between the air freshener and your dash and it comes out so it's got like a little magnet on the middle center of it um, yeah, it's quite good. I mean, it, my phone, it holds, holds my phone all right. Sometimes, if I go over a bump or something, it, it can sort of slip out and it has fallen down before. Um, because when I originally got the mount, I had an iPhone 5, and that used to hold out perfectly, but because this is an iPhone 8 Plus, it's quite heavier. So, yeah, maybe I, maybe I can get some more magnets to the back of it, and hopefully it might be, hold, be able to hold up more. But, yeah, we'll see. So next thing is my LED interior lights, which I recently just done a video on. Oh, my battery is not let me pen them on. But yeah, I recently done a video on them, and uh, so far so good. I mean, obviously I haven't had them for long, um, but they seem to be cool, yeah. I'm pretty happy with them. Next thing is my aftermarket radio. Now, this thing is probably about 15 months old so far, so I have had it for a little while. Um, it's alright, I mean sometimes it has glitched out a couple of times uh, where I've had to reset the, the actual radio because my phone won't connect to the Bluetooth or, and it just sort of freezes and stuff but um, 
I mean, it does YouTube, it does movies, it does CDs, Bluetooth, um, it does have the GPS and USB and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's alright, it's just sometimes it can be a bit slower, so, so um, yeah. So the next thing I'm going to go over is my lighting, so like headlights, rear tail lights, um, and this one, I'm going to start off with my low beam. So for my lighting, I have a HID kit on my low beam and HID kit on my high beam as well because the I, the Aldi headlights basically you have one section for the low beam lights and one section for the high beam lights so it's basically just the same kit, I bought the same kit twice um, so yeah they're pretty cool, they're super bright at night um, yeah I'm pretty happy with them and it's a big upgrade compared to what they used to be when they were standards next thing is my LED daytime running lights now these are just a nice little modification to have when you're obviously in the day you don't have your headlights on so it's just a nice little blue glow that you get when you're driving around I think it looks quite neat so yeah I'm pretty happy with them my LED fold light bulbs now these are really bright at night as well um, I've only tried them in the fog a couple of times not many um, but if you just turn them on at night you can definitely see a big difference they are quite bright so yeah I'm happy with them and I think they look quite neat so next thing is my LED number plate lights so basically because I have a reverse camera one of the sections of the number plate lights are taken up by the reverse camera so one of them will be the reverse camera and the number plate light and one of them will be the 16 LED number plate light on the right which is super bright and it lights up all the floor and everything so I'm pretty happy with it I mean it, it lights up the number plate more than I need it to anyway so um, yeah I mean they work well so I'm happy with them so the next thing is my brakes so because this thing is actually like remapped and everything and it's doing a hundred brake more than what it comes out of factory um, I've thought okay right I need to get some better brakes and I am rolling with EBC yellow stuff pads at the front with a bigger brake kit so basically this is the standard caliper but I have a different carrier so it carries the caliper further back so I can get a bigger disc now I think the disc size is I think 320 millimeters um, or it's 312 um, but yeah, I mean, they are really good. They stop instantly. Um, the rear brakes, they are Mintex. Now, originally I had all four of my brakes Mintex, but um, I found that a couple after driving a little while, when the they got really hot, they just failed. So they wouldn't work. I put my foot on the brake and just be really spongy until they cooled down and then it'd be okay again. So I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna get EBC, and then ever since then, it's never had a problem. And all, all of my brakes have got stainless steel braided hoses as well, um, which is a nice upgrade from the normal standard rubber ones. Um, it just basically stops the hose from bulging when you're pressing the brakes, so it's basically just more instant braking. So for handling, um, I have my tyres are 225-40-18, Goodyear efficiency grip. Uh, I've had these on for the whole lifetime, I've had the wheels on, so more than a year. Uh, I think it says 2016 I've had them since. Um, but yeah, I mean, they don't, they don't spin, or, well, they spin in the wet. Sometimes, I think first it will spin in dry, and second it will sort of like, the traction control light will flick on and off. Um, but yeah, I mean they're good round corners, they don't slide or anything, so I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, for anti-roll bars, I've got a white line anti-roll bar front and rear. So um, yeah, I mean they've actually got a big difference. Originally I'd done the, the rear one first and I realised how much of a big difference they make. So what I did, uh, I got the rear one obviously and then I got the front one. Um, so yeah, it's, it is a big difference. You do do see a big difference between when like you're going around corners and the chassis is just still there's no flex it just stays so yeah it's a really good upgrade I mean I recommend it for anybody that you guys have Audis I'd re definitely recommend getting some anti roll bars bottom arm poly flex bushings so basically I don't think I can get any clips of this um, it's basically the bushings in the, in the bottom arms they're all poly flex um, as well as 
if you can see, I'll probably be able to get a little clip of it. Is the power flex? Uh, is it power flex? Yeah, power flex anti lift kits. Uh, so this basically just keeps the wheels down and stop them from hopping when it's uh, basically wheel spinning. Um, they they do still hop, but not as bad. It just basically tries to keep all the traction down to the floor, um, which it does. It does do a good job, and there's a big difference compared to what it is standard. I do have a Polyflex dog bone mount for the engine as well, um, engine mount. So it's basically just a Polyflex insert that goes inside the uh, dog mode mount. Uh, but it is a big difference as soon as you put it in, like there's no movement in the engine anymore. It just sticks there, and when you're accelerating or decelerating, or like obviously like on the overrun, it uh, there is a big difference. Like it, it doesn't jolt anymore. It just literally just goes with the car. So um, yeah, I'm happy with that. So next thing is my AP coilovers. So I've had these on for about 18 months. And these are actually really good coilovers. I mean, they don't—they're quite stiff, but they're not stupid stiff. Um, I think they set me back about four hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. I mean, I've not had any problems since. So uh, yeah. So now my last thing is the engine. So what have I done to this engine since standard? I've—I'll try to get a couple of clips here, but I've got a front mount intercooler, which is basically behind the air conrad. So it's basically sandwiched between the air comrade and the normal radiator for the engine. Um, but uh, yeah, that makes a big difference as soon as you get it in there, guys. Like literally, without a map or anything, it literally there is a big difference between what airflow you get from that and what airflow you get from standard. So the next thing will be my turbo back Miltec system. Now I have done a video on this, but it literally is a brilliant system like if I'm gonna get another car and I'm gonna get another exhaust I would definitely go back to Miltec because the sound of it when it's under load or when it hits boost is literally sounds awesome and originally I had the catback system which was alright um, it just wasn't as loud as I would want it to be so then I got the turbo downpipe Miltec which is I think three inch I think it might be three inch all the way back um, but uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. It does sound awesome through the tunnels and everything. And I'll put a little clip here. So next thing is my KNN intake kit. So this is, I think, the name of this intake is called Typhoon by KNN. Now I did have a KNN filter before this but it was in a box and I wanted an open filter so that when I got the car remapped I could get more air in the open air intake. So yeah I'm pretty happy with that, um, it does sound awesome um, especially on boost and letting off the boost it's, it goes, you know, makes all the turbo sounds so yeah it's pretty cool. Uh, so last thing is my remap, now this remap is probably only about 6 months old. Um, it's basically mapped to a 246 brake, uh, which is enough for me for now. Um, I do want to get a KO4 turbo because these 1.8 TFSI engines come with a KO3, so I will be getting a KO4 in the future and then trying to go for maybe the 300 mark or any higher than that. So, um, yeah, I think I've covered it all. Um, if I haven't covered anything, if I've missed anything, then I will definitely make sure to put it in the end. In the end. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.